Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are getting back to our really cool water base finish on this guitar. So we recently talked about this and how you can get a high quality, really nice waterborne finish on a guitar or really on pretty much anything else for that matter. Um, today we're getting back to work on this guy and we are going to use a completely water based die to do the sides and the back so that we can then move on to the finishing process. Really shouldn't say the finishing process, I guess this is kind of part of it. But anyway, we're going to get the rest of the color on here so that we can gloss this thing up. So what we're going to be using today is Bellin's Aniline Dye. And this stuff comes in a nice compact little container of powder. So I'm just going to mix this powder right into some water. A lot smaller and more convenient than having to carry around a big thing of stain all the time. Yeah, easy to work with. So this is a great do-it-yourself option. It's a great do-it-at-home option. It's well, it's just a great option. It's going to give us a nice quality dye and it's water-based, so it's safe. It doesn't smell at all. This stuff's easy to keep in your house because there's not a whole lot of it and it's really easy to work with. One of the nice things about water-based, now let's just dump some. One of the nice things about these water-based dyes is that they don't dry too quick. So you got lots of time to manipulate them and make sure that you're ending up with a nice even finish at the end, a nice even color and look. If you get something like an alcohol-based dye, what you end up with a lot of times is kind of some uneven dye work because it'll soak in and dry really quickly and you won't have time to spread it out. The water-based stuff soaks in a little further, which can be good or bad, but it's got enough open time, if you will, which is more of a glue term, but whatever, enough open time that you don't have to worry so much about it drying in place and not being able to move it around. So there we go. This is the jet black and uh, yeah. I got it mixed up pretty powerful here. I, I use quite a bit of the dye per the amount of water, but certainly you can tone that back a little bit if you want a more transparent look. In fact, you know what? Let's do that. I'm going to go double the amount of water that I got in this. This is really a that looks about right type thing. It's a, you know, you just mix it until you're happy with it. You can test it out. Right now it is jet black. I think we're going to want a little bit of grain coming through. So I'm going to dilute this a little bit, stir it up some more and then you can see how it performs on this guitar body. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna start off with the back here. We've got this nice, thin, well, I shouldn't say nice, thin. I don't love that it's thin, but we've got a very thin layer of kind of maple veneer at the far top side here, or bottom side, um, because this is essentially a very thin plywood that comprises this thing. I'm gonna get my stick out of the way there and take a little piece of shop towel and that's what I'm going to use to apply this. So it really doesn't get much simpler or cheaper than this kind of application method for this kind of product. You just mix it in water, use a glorified paper towel. Let's see what we end up with here. Yeah, you can see grain through that. It's going to be relatively easy to blend because it's water-based. I don't have to worry about going over my binding. That is not a problem, so don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> very easy to fix. We just scrape it after. The part that concerns me here is this is a very cheap guitar kit. Uh, if you want one, feel free to pick one up using the link in the description for TomTop, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's cheap. The quality control isn't 100% fantastic, so there are some issues with it, and among those issues is glue lines. And I'm worried that as I go around the edge here, I'm going to encounter a fair few of these glue lines. And it's going to be hard for the stain to soak in because the glue saturates the wood and doesn't really let it. So not so bad so far. Not too bad. A couple of minor areas where the dye is having a little bit of trouble, but like I said, pretty minor. So that's not bad. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that's going so far. We'll see if that continues throughout the rest of this. Sometimes when you're doing this, you have to go back over the edges and kind of go around in circles a little bit to blend out an edge. It's not all that uncommon. So when I say that it's easy to mix the water-based stuff and, and get a nice even look, well, in order to do that, you got to go in and work out all of those uh, all of those edges when you're doing overlapping areas like this when you're coming in in several passes. I'm pretty happy with that so far. That looks really nice. Getting a nice green pattern coming through. 
I'm glad I diluted it a bit. Maybe darken it up a little bit here. But So often you get uh, people who haven't done this sort of thing before and you see that they're scared to put any of this on the binding. Let me go ahead and tell you, don't, don't worry about that. That's not a big deal. You can go in afterward, and I'm going to, uh, with a razor blade and simply scrape that off. So if your binding turns a little bit black from dye, don't worry, we can fix that. Just like if it turns a little bit black from paint, you can go in with the razor blade and simply take that right off of there. It's a non-issue. Look how easy this is. See, there we go. And just like that, we've got a black, really nice black dyed guitar back. Some minor problems, again, with the glue. So we've got an area here with some glue on it. We've got an area here with some glue on it. But it actually blends into the green pattern a little bit on the back here. So not too bad. Okay, that's going to keep drying. But while it does, because I'm not really worried about screwing it up, I'm just going to go ahead and do the edges now. So again, if you want this kit, you can grab it from the link in the description. If you want this die, there is an Amazon link in the description as well. And it has most of the Bellin products that I use. I believe I put this die in that link somewhere as well. So you can check it out. I've got some lists loaded into that link. Ooh, that actually looks really nice. Nice green pattern through there. I've got some lists loaded in through that link. Uh, and there's one for finishing products, I believe, and one for Bellin products because they are probably my favorite finishing product company. So feel free to check that stuff out there. Um, in case this wasn't clear, and hopefully it was, I'm not necessarily recommending that you pick up this kit. There are definitely some issues with it. A little bit of quality control uh, going on. Honestly, the, the neck is probably the biggest problem. It's got some, some problems with it that I'm not too happy about. So I actually may end up replacing that neck and kind of putting in a different system altogether and making some crazy changes to this guitar and the way it's set up. Just because I like to do silly stuff like that and because the neck isn't in good enough form really for me to worry too much about wasting a good, good piece of uh, guitar. <laughs> It's got some it's got some problems when you go in and you get a bunch on the binding like this it's easiest just to wipe some off while it's still wet because stuff doesn't really stick to that plastic so give it a wipe and then you can come back after and do the scraping work so I'm almost done here this has gone quite quickly chances are I should lay it down on the side that isn't still wet because I dyed this a matter of a few seconds ago and just come in and do these horns. Yeah, get that done. There's definitely some glue in there, but there's only so much you can do. Wipe away my excess. And now I'm going to give this a few minutes to dry, and then we'll come back in scrape this binding real quick and then we can go ahead and start putting on some water-based products to seal it in and start working toward our nice finish. All right, she's had five minutes or so to dry now. Let's see, we got that nice maple grain coming through. I'll give you a better look at that in a minute. Well, after I scrape it. Looks good on the edges too. A few glue spots like I was saying. So, yeah, what can you do? Nice contrast with the front, with the orange. We're gonna do something about the glue spots on the front too, but right now, it's time for the fun part. I lied, this isn't the fun part at all. But we do get to play with knives. So that's cool, right? Play with knives, that's not cool at all. Do I wanna use this or just a flat razor blade? As with everything else, there are a bunch of different ways to do this. You can use just a straight razor blade. Um, you can put some tape on there to protect things and make sure that you've got kind of a depth stop as you go if you want if you're looking for something to hold it you can use one of these things you can just grab these at home depot the blade goes in here and i realize i'm being kind of playing it fast and loose with this thing but i spent a lot of time playing around with razor blades i guess anyway that goes in there 
and uh, yeah, makes it easier to hold. That's fine. These, this is a little folding knife for, from Work Pro, or yeah, holds a razor blade, obviously. I really like these because they fit my hand nicely. You know, they they give you something to hang on to, and they look cool. Um, and these are available, I believe, in my Amazon link if you want them. But, you know, they're good for some stuff, like having something to hold on to as you do the top like this. But sometimes it's easier just to use a straight razor blade. Every time I say that, it makes me think of shaving. Not a straight razor blade, like a straight razor blade. Anyway, we've got lots of binding to clean up. We've got the top, we've got the back, and we've got the binding around the holes. So, let's get you zoomed in a little bit here and get started taking care of that. All right guys, so we've got the color all on here now, except for the stuff that we're gonna use to hide the glue lines. The binding is all scraped. Green pattern's looking pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with this. After we get that paint on the glue lines, I'm gonna use some water-based varnish from Bellin to do kind of the seal coats and the back and the sides. And we're gonna finish off the top with an aerosol spray, also waterborne. It's gonna be good. Now I was actually planning on starting that today, but I checked the time and uh, yeah. We're gonna have to do it next time, so uh, see you later. Oh boy, am I gonna be late. Anyway, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already because we're gonna put the finish on this pretty soon and we've got a bunch more guitar bodies up there that need some work and a bunch more guitar kits over there behind my actual tripod. There's lots of stuff coming up. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Have a good one.